And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Listen now to Yuletide Miracle, starring Larry Haynes and Santos Ortega, and written especially for Suspense by John Robert. Go ahead, laugh if you like. Only kids and old ladies believe in ghosts. Yeah, sure, that's what I thought, too. Until I met a chubby little guy with hair like cotton candy who called himself Sir Benjamin. But first, let me fill in the details about my meeting with Sir Benjamin. I was in one of those free eats missions along the Bowery. I ducked in there to escape a parole officer named Brannigan. Brannigan was out to hand me a merry set of bracelets for Christmas when he caught me. The mission was empty. I had it all to myself. Except for a skinny young punk hacking out a cough that made the benches jump. Hey. Hey, kid, you're sick. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You need a doctor. I've had a doctor. I'm wearing hospital pajamas under this suit. Oh? Yeah. Yeah, I went down the fire escape to the street to here. I want to get home for Christmas, finally. I've been years making up my mind to it. Uh, uh, what, what, what are those boxes you're holding? Hey, Christmas presents for my mother. My sister Linda. My kid sister Linda. Hey, you like this? Oh. Lady's gold watch, huh? Yeah, it pins on a dress. Mm -hmm. I once stole my mother's watch and sold it. This, uh, this squares it. Yeah. Uh, what's in the other box? Nylon stockings. My sister Linda's always had a... <coughs> hey, 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 kid, now, come on, get hold of yourself, huh? <coughs> Come on, now. Hey, I can't get hold. Look, these presents. If you could get them to Mrs. B. Simmons for me, tell her that Tommy... Her son... Tommy, Mrs. B. Simmons. Kid. Hey, kid. Come on, Tommy, get hold. The coughing stopped. And it was right then... That Sir Benjamin, the chubby little ghost with hair like cotton candy, happened. The first I knew of him was magic, as if... as if he was announcing himself. It was music coming from an upright piano on a platform way down the mission hall. A Christmas hymn. But look, until my eyes popped out of my head, I couldn't see anybody. The piano was going, but nobody I could see was playing it. I went up to the piano and reached over the stool to see how the trick was worked. And in my hands, touched something solid, like, like somebody sitting on the stool. And then I saw fingers, hands, skipping along the keys. Only hands, as if they had a, a life of their own. I don't know why, but I grabbed at them. Ow! That hurt. I bruise easily. Hey, I'm... I'm saying things, and now I'm hearing voices. My voice, Chris. You're hearing me. Well, where are you? Right here, my boy. What? Just be patient, and I'll rematerialize. It, uh... It takes... a moment or two. I saw the hands build. First arms, then elbows, shoulders... And then a body, slowly. And then the last thing, a head with little puffs of white hair. And then a face, a chubby face, rosy and smiling. Mm. Uh, well, here I am. Every bit of me, I trust. Who are you? Sir Benjamin. I'm sorry if I worried you. Hey, that, that trick, like like you were invisible. But I was invisible. Oh, come on. Nobody can do that. I can. And that's only one of my powers. But first, 
Suppose we get right down to business, Chris? We have business? Of course. That boy over there on the bench, Tommy Simmons. Hmm. Oh, oh, the kid, yeah, you know, I almost forgot. He, he's lying there like dead. I don't dare go outside, but somebody's got to call an ambulance, do something. It's too late for Tommy. Well, now, we don't know that. We're not doctors. I know that. The problem now is, what are you going to do about his dying wish? What? Oh. What do you mean about delivering those presents to his family? It would be fine if you deliver those presents in person. Me? Hey, now, come off it, mister. It's not my job and it's none of my business. Besides, I... I got problems of my own. Brannigan? What? The parole officer? How did you know about Brannigan? <laughs> I'm a very versatile and talented ghost. I also have powers of conjuration. Come again. Turn the boy's dying wish aside, and I'll conjure up Brannigan. <laughs> you don't think I can? I don't think you even exist. How about that? I think I'm dreaming you up. Very well. I will demonstrate. Hold on to something, Chris. Conjuration is a very cataclysmic and strenuous business. You'll definitely be safer if you hold on to something. Don't ask me why, but I grabbed hold of the piano. That's a good thing I did, too, because the joint began to rock like an earthquake was hitting it. finished now. Ah, this is quite a job of conjuring. But uh, here's Brannigan. What? Well, see? On the street, peering through the plate glass window of the mission, watching you. Holy smoke. It is Brannigan. Hey, I gotta get out of here. I gotta find the back way out. Here, through this yard door. Quickly. I dived into the yard with Brannigan's police was blowing at me. So the yard was a dead end. High building walls all around like a prison yard. No exit except the long, narrow alley to the street past Brannigan. I flattened in the shadows, a dead duck. I was listening to Brannigan shout orders at a couple of blue coats who'd come running when he whistled. Watch the exit, men, while I flush him out. D'Angelo, you're trapped. Better surrender peacefully. Do you hear me, D'Angelo? Trapped was the word, like a rat. Oh, a pity. <sighs> Too bad, Chris. What's the penalty for violation of parole? A year, maybe two. Oh, you were a big help shooing me into the yard. <laughs> Here I go, talking to myself. You're again. talking to me. I could really be a big help. Give up, D'Angelo. Don't make me take you the hard way. Think fast, Chris. You were to respect Tommy Simmons' dying wish. You were to go home for Christmas in his place. Okay, okay, if I was to, then what? Then Brannigan goes empty-handed... In order to catch you, he must first see you. Oh, sure, sure. Brannigan's suddenly going to go stone blind, huh? No. You are becoming invisible. It was a laugh. But the laugh was I was invisible. At least the Brannigan I was. He came right toward me with a flashlight in one hand and a gun in the other. Only he looked right through me as if he didn't see me. D'Angelo! I know you gotta be in this yard. I watched him scratch every inch. And then scratch his head and give up. Now, Chris, for your part of the bargain, here are Tommy's presents. Go deliver them. Now, look. I'll leave here and only run into Brannigan outside somewhere. Now, what about that? You remain invisible until you've arrived at your destination. That is, as long as you remain faithful to your mission. Go, Chris. Okay, okay. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where am I going? Where do I find this Mrs. B. Simmons? Not far. Just a brief train ride to a neighboring town. The town, Chris, is Bethlehem. As Sir Benjamin had promised, it was a brief train ride. A funny... I felt like I'd come a long, long way. It was a deserted train shed with snow packed high. The station sign turned silver by the moon read 
Bethlehem. Not a soul in sight. Uh, no, no. There was someone. A girl. A girl in high boots, a snow hat, and the moon on her cheeks. She was coming toward me. Hello. Uh, hello. Are you... Chris? Yeah, yeah, my name is Chris. I I'm Linda. Linda Simmons. I came to drive you home. Just like that? Just like what? Well, I mean, no, no explanations. Like you knew I was here. And, and how come you know my name? Oh, I was told you were coming. And told your name, too. You were told? Somebody telephoned. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he telephoned. He, he wasn't kidding when he said he was a talented ghost. Hmm? Say, you, uh, you, you came right at me just now. That means you saw me. You can see me, huh? See you? Yeah, yeah. Face, hands, body, me. I'm a guy. You, you look at me and you see a guy. No. I cannot see you. <sighs> then I am invisible. No. It's just that I'm blind. Drive home. Let's take it now, huh? There was a horse-drawn sleigh around the side of the shed. Silver bells on the reins and a horse whose name had to be Dobbin. Uh, you drove this rig all the way here by yourself? Oh, you don't drive Dobbin. He knows every inch of the way to the Bethlehem station. You see, we've been coming here every night for years. Nice. And slow and easy. Mm -hmm. I'd been running since I was born, and now I was asking myself, what for? A guy can't stay tough in a horse-drawn rig in the snow. And when Linda put her hand on mine, I opened my fist for the first time I could remember. cottage, nothing fancy, with a candle burning brightly in the window. Come in, Chris. Yeah. Mother! Uh, right here, Linda. Oh, um, Mother, this is Chris. Welcome home, Chris. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, it's a nice place you got here, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Yeah, I, uh, I don't exactly know how to say this, Mrs. Simmons. You see, I'm just a mug. I... Quit school the minute I learned how to tell the teacher off, so if I ain't got the right words... Oh, you don't have to have the right words, Chris. You don't even have to get it said. You see, I know. You know? About Tommy? Yes, all about Tommy. Well, well, how? Oh. Oh, there's somebody... Somebody talked to you on the phone, too, huh? Yes, somebody telephoned me. Mm. Well, well, the last thing the kid thought about was you and Linda and uh, coming home for Christmas. Oh. And he asked me to give you these. Uh, gold watch for you, Mrs. Simmons. And oh, Chris. These for you, Linda. Nylon stockings. Thank you. It's uh, nothing big, I guess, but Tommy didn't have much to give the way it was with him. You're wrong, Chris. Tommy had a great deal to give, and in his way, he gave it. I don't follow. A boy come home. Tommy couldn't come home himself, so he sent you to us, Chris. You can say about me that I was born in 1935 and I stopped crying in 1936 at the ripe old age of one. And you can say about me that I let a tear go I never knew I had. Christmas, 1961. Linda. Yes, Chris. Uh... Don't get me wrong. You know, it's, it's no crime being poor. Say it, Chris. Well, well, it's, it's, it's like this. It's Christmas, but I don't see any tree. And I've been sniffing close enough to the kitchen to know there's nothing roasting in that oven. You, you're disappointed. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, is it all right if I borrow Dobbin outside? All right. Of course it's all right, Chris. <laughs> But 
me down as a guy who never knows when to shut up. A tree and a turkey? Sure, lady. Nothing to it. Presto Mephisto, I'm a magician. Here's your tree, lady, and here's your bird. <laughs> what? Quite a remarkable feat of magic, Chris. Presto Mephisto, eh? <laughs> it's a Benjamin. I was wondering when you'd show up the kibitz. Uh, you, you are here, Sir Benjamin. Yes, but immaterially. And please don't ask me to rematerialize, Chris. I daren't show my face in Bethlehem. Why not? I lived here once before my uh, present situation. I wasn't very popular with my townspeople, I'm afraid. Oh, what they have against you? Bills. I died owing the butcher, the baker, and even the undertaker. Oh. <laughs> Let's get back to your problem. Yeah, a tree and a turkey, and it's your problem. I'm dumping it right into your lap. You got me into this in the first place. I see. Have you any money? Not a plug nickel, and even if I had, the town is shut tight. But you're a talented ghost. A tree and a turkey ought to be a cinch. You got any ideas on it, Sir Benjamin? Only one. My customary way of acquiring necessary things while I was alive. Your customary way? Credit, Chris. And I hope never to be a borrower again. But I suppose it can't be helped. And, uh... Just where do we borrow this tree in Turkey? From Uncle Kale's poultry farm. It's just past the merchant's bank a short drive. Well, I'm a stranger here. Move over. I'll take the reins. Get out there. There aren't any ghosts, and call me crazy, but Sir Benjamin drove the rig at a smart clip to a farm stacked with freshly cut trees. Take your pick of tree and carry it to the rig. And Chris. Yeah, what? No, uh... A necessary disturbance. I owe Uncle Kale a formidable bill already. I threw the tree on the rig and went back. Sir Benjamin was coming out of a poultry house carrying a great big fat turkey. There's a job persuading this feathered fellow. Here, take the leash and be on your way. Well, wait a minute. Where are you going? To leave a receipt for Uncle Kale for one tree and one turkey. <laughs> I'd sure like to be there when he reads it. So would I, Chris. So would I. <laughs> I hurried back to the rig, right into the arms of trouble. Brannigan. Hello, D'Angelo. What? Uh, run and you won't get ten yards. Okay, okay. What did you do, look into a crystal ball to find out where I was? I didn't have to. I just took the same train you took. Ah, oh, baloney. You had to see me to be able to do that. I had to see you. What were you, invisible or something? Sure, sure, I was invisible. <laughs> D'Angelo, you killed me. Invisible. Oh, yeah? All right, what about me yard behind the mission? You walked right past me. You played your flash right on me, but you couldn't see me. How about that? I'll answer that one. Maybe I didn't see you because I didn't want to see you. And now what? Uh, it's the truth, D'Angelo. I didn't want to catch you. I had to make noises like wanting to because I'm a cop. But I didn't want to make the arrest. Not on Christmas, D'Angelo. Yeah. Well, you're making me arrest now. Maybe I'm not. But why'd you tell me all the way here? To see what you were up to. To see if you really had a heart. Yeah. So, you're bringing the Simmons a tree and a turkey. Well, now, how do you know about the Simmons? I knew Tommy Simmons. I saw him pass you those presents in the mission before he died. I phoned Mrs. Simmons and Linda that you were coming. If, if, if it was you who telephoned? Me, sure. Who'd you think? What's it? I thought Sir Bench. You thought who, D'Angelo? Never mind. Skip it. Hmm. Now, I'll ask one question, and then maybe I'll leave. Now, think carefully before you answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask. If I arrange for you to keep in touch with the parole officer by mail, providing those letters were postmarked Bethlehem, would you... Would you like it that way? Would I? Brandon, where else does a guy want to write letters from but home? It's almost all there is to the story of Sir Benjamin, me, Brannigan, Mrs. Simmons, and Linda. Well, we had to take the door down to get the tree into the house, and we had to find an extra stomach apiece to accommodate the turkey. And then later, with the fire going and the lights down low, Linda and I sat dreaming on the sofa. I had my fist open for keeps. 
And her hand was right in mine, like it belonged there. It's been a perfectly wonderful Christmas, Chris. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. <laughs> and thanks to you, we had a tree and a turkey. Well, well thanks to me. Now, the tree and the turkey wasn't my trick. The tree and the turkey were? Mm -hmm. Chris, what are you saying? No, no, really, the thanks goes to another guy. A chubby little guy who sure has a talent for getting what he wants. His name's Sir Benjamin. Sir Benjamin? <laughs> yeah, why? Well, the, uh, the coincidence of, of, of names. Well, I used to call my father Sir Benjamin in play. Oh, we'd play Lord and Lady. My father and I, he'd call me Princess Linda, and I'd call him Sir Benjamin. The coincidence of names, you said, huh? Linda, suppose... Suppose it isn't a coincidence. But... But my father died years ago. Yeah, so did my Sir Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, the guy I'm talking about is a ghost. A ghost? Yeah. A ghost like I met in a mission when your brother Tommy died. All of a sudden, a piano started going. Piano music, but nobody I could see was playing. Chris? Huh? Our piano is playing. Yeah. Yeah, so it is. Hey, you want to bet it's Sir Benjamin? Bet? But how, how can you prove it? Well, easy. I toss a turkey wing at the piano stool. I bet you Sir Benjamin lets out a yell and complains about how easily he bruises. Do we bet? <laughs> What will we bet, Chris? A kiss. That way, Linda. Nobody loses. Starring Larry Haynes and Santos Ortega and written especially for Suspense by John Roberts. Next week, instead of another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense, a gala song fest well calculated to put you in a bright holiday mood. The seventh annual Christmas Sing with Bing will come your way over the CBS radio network next Sunday evening, Christmas Eve. Singing along with Bing, Catherine Crosby, the Norma Luboff Choir, and those two fugitives from the Met, Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd. <laughs> Suspense is produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Featured in tonight's story where Rosemary Rice is Linda, Joe DeSantis is Brannigan, Catherine Roth is Mrs. Simmons, and Bill Lipton is Tommy. Two weeks from today, we'll return with The Old Man, written by Bob Corcoran. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.